somebody can handle it. <laughs> it's a little bit of multitasking on this end, but um, we thank God for being gracious and giving us the opportunity to be on. We bless God for, ha for having the occasion, amen, to come together. And tonight is Tag Team Wednesday. How about that? <laughs> Amen. And that is Tag Team Wednesday. Uh, God uh, touched my heart this morning, my mind. Uh, Pastor Stanley and I were already having a discussion and uh, opened that door for uh, us to join forces together in um, delivering God's word tonight. Uh, and it's uh, a word I think that will help everyone and feed everyone uh, associated. Uh, those last five verses, those verses you read are out of 21, but we're actually going to look at uh, information in chapter 17 and 18 that actually leads up to 21. Uh, come on, give God a hand clap for Pastor Stanley being on, being, a, being a, right on the spot. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We thank God for you. We thank God for you. We thank God for you. Uh, I just want to discuss tonight the appearances Abraham had from God. And now the title tonight is called Waiting on Showtime. I know when you saw that, you're like, what are you, what are you talking about? Well, all this time, God was saying what well, he was going to show Abraham. Mm -hmm. So if, if you've been like uh, most of us, you've been waiting on showtime. Uh, I don't know how many of you have ever been to a show. Uh, normally, you see them setting up. You see them fixing up the stage. And you see them you know, sometimes... If it's an orchestra or something, you hear them tuning up the, the instruments or what have you, but you're literally sitting there waiting on showtime. And, um, you know, we we talk about, but we rarely unpack some of the significance, especially the significance to our own walk and our faith, uh, the story of Abraham. So when we think about waiting on God to show us, waiting on showtime, Abraham is a great example of faith. And God's appearances in chapter 17, 18, and 21 are an interesting study in waiting. Study in waiting. That's something I think we've all had to experience and we all are experiencing now is waiting, right? And um, Amen. And I have the pleasure tonight of, of having not all, only all of you guys as well, but uh, my, 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 my colleague, my brother uh, from another mother, Pastor Standing on as well to, to help us go through God's word tonight. Uh, if someone would uh, just start us out by reading the first six verses of chapter 17 in the book of Genesis. The first six verses in chapter 17 of the book of Genesis. Say so the book of Genesis, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Chapter 17? Six. Yes, sir. First, how many verses? The first six. First six, okay. I'm reading from the uh, NIV. Uh, uh, the top, the title is The Covenant of Circumcision. It reads, when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Verse number three, Abraham fell face down and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer be, will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. Verse six, I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you and kings will come from you. Amen. Amen. And, and Amen. what we see here, God appears to Abram when he's 99 years old. Hmm. Now, to kind of backtrack a little bit, Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. Hmm. Uh, he was 86 years old when the son uh, Ishmael was born of Hagar, the servant girl. And he had waited like 25 years wow. for the fulfillment of God's promise to give a son through Sarah. And it had been some 13 years since his last recorded word from God. 
Mm. Okay. So he waited 25 years total. But it's been 13 years since he heard the last recorded word from God. And the question I ask tonight for discussion, how long have you waited since you last heard from God regarding your promise? How long have you waited since you last heard from God regarding your promise? I think I I, I waited for uh, my son, my oldest son. I waited for actually, I think I waited five or six years. Because mm. I, I, I was telling the Lord, my druthers, <laughs> age 21, that didn't happen. And um, so um, after I told him that, and then I, I just reminded him of it, you know, whenever I thought of it. But it, it, it was a wait for me. But I thank God for the outcome. Amen. Amen. And, and think about something God told you was going to be conceived of something you were going to give birth to. Mm. It could have been a living person and it could just have been a thing. It could have been a business. Yeah. It could have been a ministry. Yeah. It, it could have been a lot of different things, but God showed you, told you, communicated through someone, bring, brought it to you in a dream or a vision. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But it's been a long time since you've heard from God and you're still waiting. How many have been through that waiting experience? Or maybe going through it now. Amen. Amen. I, I can recall myself uh, being, uh, and I can use Burning Bush as a, an example, mm -hmm. uh, being called out by Pastor McNair to be the youth pastor. Mm -hmm. um, was weird because when I got there, it felt like somebody was already the youth pastor. I mean, it was a preferable of children, events going on for the children and everything. And I'm like, okay, maybe Pastor McNair missed the mark on that one. Cause I'm like, there's clearly somebody already in this position that's doing it. Um, long story short, um, one Sunday, came back there and all of that had come to a cease. The person who was usually in that position had just left. Uh, some of the advisors that were originally part of the youth department had left. And it was kind of like, you're coming into that season, but it's like what you just saw was like, like they, they, this was already functioning. Like, why would you put me in there? So there was a waiting time where I had to not just walk into the position. I had to wait to learn and be ushered into the position and molded as clay to unlearn certain things that I had learned from other from my past church where God had to prepare me. There's a difference when he makes the promise and say, hey, I'm going to give this to you. But then there's that process of preparing. And how long is that process of preparing? You know, that's the question. Like, my wife is a baker. She can bake a cake and I can smell it when it's cooking. But the question is, when is it going to get done so I can get a slice? <laughs> I can think that it's done all I want to because it smells good. But if I go in there and get a piece too early, it's not going to be ready on the inside. You know, it's, it's, it's just not going to be cooked. So I think that that part of waiting, that preparation part is the key to waiting you know yeah. not just waiting and saying oh when the cake gonna be done there's a there's a molding that takes place in our waiting on the inside of us that god does something with us like clay yeah absolutely you know i i, I concur because i uh the ministry i had in jacksonville florida mm -hmm. god showed me that we were going to have that my ministry was going to have a food pantry mm -hmm. a, a a food bank and and I'm like, okay, God, I gotta, I don't have a big congregation. I gotta figure out how you're gonna do this. You know what I mean? And and, and God did something interesting. He said, use a box. So I literally started a food pantry with one box at the door of the sanctuary. And I asked people when they came into the church, 
when they go shopping to pick up some extra canned foods or items, dry goods, and put them in the box. Hmm. And we, as the box would fill up, we would go invest and get meat to go along with it. Mm-hmm. And we would literally fed one to two families every month. Wow. For a few years. Wow. And, and it, it just kept, it just kept filling up. It, sometimes it would take longer than others, but I did not know. I didn't, and I told, share this with Bishop McNair, that when he asked me to, to take over the ministry at Burning Bush, and I looked across the street, wow. and I knew what the building was, mm-hmm. and it began to dawn on me, there's an entire building across the street now wow. that's a food pantry, that's a food bank, mm. but I started with a box by the door. Wow. And faithfully, every month, the box stayed there. And the box actually turned into a, a rubber bin. You know, the, the members were like, well, let's get rid of the, the paper box. You know, and like during Thanksgiving and Christmas, we would like decorate the box, you know what I mean? Wow. But it just stayed, it stayed a box. Man. By the door that would fill up according to how people deposited right. food items into it. And, and we were able to just go to people's houses that we heard that needed food mm. and just say, we're from Light of Day Outreach Ministry. Mm. We want to bring you this food and give it to you and be a blessing <laughs> to you. But now, I think the, the We Care Ministry across the street feeds over 200 families a week. Wow. So when I think about the goodness of Jesus, Mm-hmm. and his mm-hmm. promise that he made that I would be associated with a food bank in ministry. You know what I mean? I didn't know the years that it would take using one box to turn into an entire building. So I, I, I shared that mm-hmm. because I was thinking today about that. I was like, Lord, you know, you, you just really got, you just, I would say jokes, but he just got <laughs> away. You know, that you just don't see that box getting any bigger. Same mm-hmm. size box. Mm-hmm. It just turned into a rubber bin, which was mm-hmm. a little bit bigger than the original box. Mm-hmm. But that's why I asked the question, how long have you waited since you last heard from God mm-hmm. regarding your promise? Because it's important to, to believe, like Abraham, that if God said it, he's going to do it. Right. Amen. Amen. Well, I I know that you all have heard me tell this story before, but it was I was six years old when I had an allergic reaction to penicillin that took my eyesight, and seven years old when I had surgery at Johns Hopkins Hospital in in Baltimore that we stored part of my vision. And all my life, I've always prayed and asked God to give me vision. And then in 2016, it came about where I was able to get a corneal transplant in my right eye. And after I had the surgery, I'll never forget, I called Pastor McNair, and I told him that I could see because I could see, because they did the the transplant, and it, everything turned out well, and I was in the uh, recovery room and telling the doctor what I could see, and it, I was just so elated that the surgery was a success. And then after I went home, and a few few weeks later, the cornea ruptured and blew a hole in my in my eye and and took the vision that I had and pretty much the, the eye uh is is is, is not uh, a normal uh, not an eye that can be repaired. But I still believe that I don't know when, I don't know where, I don't know how, but I know God is able. I know Amen. he's able to do anything. And I know in my heart that the day is going to come when it's going to work out for me. I'm going to get the answer to the prayer that that he 
told me that I would see. And he's not only told me, he told uh, one of the pastors at, at Vernon Bush, I won't, won't put his name out there, but he told him that I would see. And I believe that that person certainly knows God's voice probably a lot more better than I do. But I know what God has told me, and I know that whether it's on this side of the Jordan or the other, it's going to happen. Amen. 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 We know that God is faithful. We know that everything happens in his timing and according to his will. And and we wait for showtime. We wait for showtime. You know, God's uh, first words to Abram in this in this text tonight, he made an introduction. He called himself God Almighty, which is El Shaddai. Mm. Yeah, so he revealed his person and his character to Abram, that he is what? God Almighty. He is mm -hmm. El Shaddai. And uh, in the first revelation, he said to him, walk before me and be thou perfect. So he asked him to walk before him and be thou perfect, which means or blameless. So literally he wanted all of Abram. He wanted a total commitment from Abram in his walk with him. And God said to him, I will make my covenant between me and you. And, and God also reminded Abram that he had not forgotten the covenant, though it had been 25 years mm -hmm. since the promise was first made, he, he showed him that he had not forgotten the covenant. In other words, God didn't forget anything. Isn't it reassuring to know that God has not forgotten his promises to us? Amen. That, that, Amen. That God, Amen. God does not forget. <laughs> you know, but the last time we were told that the Lord communicated with Abram, was some 13 years before, which was back in Genesis 16, uh, 15 and 16. And seemingly, he had a normal relationship with God for those 13 years, which means he was still worshiping, mm -hmm. he was still praying, he was still giving, and the teacher was silent during the test. Mm -hmm. Remember I said Sunday that the teacher is always silent during the test? Mm -hmm. During this time, the teacher was silent. And it would be understandable that if at times during those 13 years that Abram felt like, wait a minute, God, it's been a while now. Yeah. You know, felt like maybe God forgot that promise. How, how have we felt during those silent years? Are those the years that we struggle with when God is silent or when it looks like he's not moving? Yeah. I think during during my time, I think it was a learning time for me yeah. to uh, know more about him mm -hmm. and want to change yeah. and want to do what was what he wanted me to do and not all that I wanted to do. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Yes. You know, uh, uh, Abram I fell on. I think when. Go ahead. I think that when when God is silent in my life, it's a faith building time for me, yes. a trusting time. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Anybody else want to comment on this on that silence that you that, that you hear or that you feel? I, I once heard um T.D. Jakes was preaching a message about uh, trusting God, and he brought, uh, he as an example, he used uh, the GPS. And he mm. said the GPS will talk at the beginning when you pull out, but the GPS doesn't really say anything until you hit a wrong turn or something like that. Wow. He said, then the GPS starts saying uh, reroute go in the other direction, find us, find this spot and turn around. But he said, as you're going in the direction with that you're supposed to be going, the GPS usually is silent. It don't say nothing. 
But as soon as you take a wrong turn, it's like, wait a minute, let me get yourself back on track, reroute yeah. yourself, you know? And I, I wonder, I don't, I can't recall the, the whole grasp of uh, Abraham's uh, trusting in God, where there are certain points where God reassured him. Like, you know, mm -hmm. usually if God's given us a promise, we can come to church one Sunday and you'll be speaking about staying faithful because in right. our in our in our in our walk we might be getting a little bit wavery right. but just that you're up in the pulpit or past deborah's up in the pulpit they might just be hitting on something that's speaking about trusting god or the choir might be singing about something about trusting god and that's kind of our reassurance to like hang in there you know and i right. wonder if abraham had points like that where god did something to reassure him hey i'm still here you know, even though you don't hear me, even though you don't, you know, you might not feel like I'm here. Like even with our, the, the struggles that we have and in the walk, believing in a promise that God has given us, there's still little things that he orchestrates to let us know, hey, I'm still, I'm still in charge. I'm still in control of everything. Yeah, and, and you, you hit it right on the head because really that the journey we're taking tonight through 17, 18 and 21, even referencing 16, even at the very, very beginning, when he started talking about the covenant in, in the 12th chapter, it's all been a series of reassurances. Mm -hmm. But in between those times has been some silence. In between those times mm -hmm. have been some waiting. And, and when he would come back or appear, uh, it would be a challenge um, for 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 Abraham and, and God knows when we need to hear. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he knows when we, when we when we're at our wits end. We're like, oh my God, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and he knows when we need that reassurance, mm -hmm. you know. And um, for, for example, a, after those during this time when he came back to Abraham of Abram, Abram fell on his face mm -hmm. when when God came. Mm -hmm. You know, but now he'd already had a visitation from God. When he first received the covenant, mm -hmm. but now he fell on his face and God uh, told him, he said, L listen to this reassurance. Mm -hmm. He said, no longer shall your name be called Abraham, but your name shall be called Abraham. Now, the question is, why did God change Abram's name at, at this juncture? Anybody? I think it was the right time. Right. What, what, what was God telling him? He was making, he, he was telling him that he was going to be the father of, of many nations, just, just not of a few. Right. So that name change was an encouragement. Well, God came back and encouraged Abram's faith in, in the promise of descendants through Sarah. He changed his name from Abram father of many to Abraham, father of many nations. See, see back then we, we, we didn't, we, we didn't change our name to sound good. You know, like, you know, some, some of us back during the, the revolutionary days, you know, changed our name from, from, from Ray, from, from Ray to Raheem or from, or from Robert to, to shock bar, or, you know what I mean? You know, we, we, we've gone through those elevations of changing our name for for different reasons, you know. But in in the biblical time, names meant everything. It said something about you. When you were given a name, it actually spoke to who you were. So when when God changed the name, He did it to encourage Abraham's faith. So so what type of pressure you think that put on Abraham? On, on Abram, when he became Abraham. I think it revealed to him that he had to step up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, now just think, people know your name has changed, right? Mm -hmm. and, and now you're being called Abraham. Mm -hmm. but, but, but you don't even have one seed, and you're talking about many nations, <laughs> you know. You talk about wearing almost a, 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 a cloak of shame almost mm -hmm. for, for your name to say one thing about you 
but you don't resemble what your name says. Yeah. You know, so it, 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 even when his name changed, it, it put a sense of, like, like you said, uh, it was time to step up, right? Uh, it was time to, to, to come to the plate. And, uh, but, but Abraham was looking, he said, like, I'm 99 years old, you know. But God changed his name, which was a reassurance that he was going to do exactly what he said he was going to do. So, somebody read verses 7 through 14 in, uh, in chapter 17. 7 through 14. I will. Okay. Uh, from the NIV. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after, after you for the generations to come to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. The whole land of Canaan where you now reside as a foreigner, I will give as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you, and I will be their God. Then God said to Abraham, as for you, you must keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you for the generations to come. This is my covenant with you and your descendants after you. The covenant you are to keep. Every male among you shall be circumcised. You are undergo you are to undergo circumcision, and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and you. For the generations to come, every male among you who is eight days old must be circumcised, including those born in your household or bought with money from a foreigner. Those who are not your offspring, whether born in your household or bought with your money, they must be circumcised. My covenant in your flesh is to be an everlasting covenant. Any circumcision, any circumcised male who has not been circumcised in the flesh will be cut off, will be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. God also said to Abraham, as Sarai, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarai. You, her name is Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give her the son by her, give you a son by her. I okay. will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of people will come from her. Verse 17, Abraham fell face down. He laughed and said to himself, will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarah bear a child at the age of 90? Amen. 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 I, I tell you, if, if it's just rich all by itself. Just the reading of the word is rich all by itself. But I did want to make a couple of points before I turn it over to Pastor Stanley here, is that he turned around and said, I will. He said, and I will establish my covenant. You know, sometimes when we're doubting, when we're waiting, when we, we, we don't see it happening, when I had that box by the door for all those years, now I'm not talking about months, I'm talking about years, that box stayed by the door. When we left the church and moved to, uh, to Virginia, the box was still by the door. Mm. 
Okay. So all that time, but God turned around and told Abraham, he said, I will. And then he said, I will give unto thee a seed. And he said that, oh. that, that thou shall what? Keep my covenant. Now, I, I'm going to just elaborate on this a little bit before we, we move over into 18 with Pastor Stanley. But listen, he didn't ask Abraham to do an easy thing. Now, now I know there's not maybe just a few gentlemen on the line tonight, you know, but, but just imagine in, in, in your mind, sanctified mind, holy, holy, holy. That God said, cut off the foreskin. Lord, can you can you bring me another covenant? Can I can mm. I have, you know what I mean? This, this can, can I get something else to do <laughs> other than cutting off the foot? Lord, I'm going to pray and ask you right mm. now that you not ask me to cut off this thing that's going to hurt me. See, we, we think about what he said, but do we think about what he said? He said, I want you to inflict pain upon yourself, enormous pain and cutting off your foreskin as a covenant with me. Lord, I'm going to need you to come up with something. Look, Jesus, have mercy, Lord. <laughs> Ladies, I know you may not understand where I'm coming from right now, but Pastor Stanley, you do. You're asking me to cut the foreskin off with a sharp object. Okay? I'm grown now. I've yeah. had this. I'm 99. Lord, right. I'm 99. Yeah. This foreskin is 99. <laughs> yeah. And look, that's what I was getting ready to say, because usually that circumcision happens at birth. But even uh, mm -hmm. yeah, at birth, you, you you still anesthetized. Right. I'm talking about <laughs> off the raw. You ain't right. you ain't drunk. He ain't said get drunk first. You know he you know he you know it ain't none of that. Ain't no painkiller. Ain't no anesthesia. Minimum. I'm trying to help everybody understand what God asked Abraham to do. Yeah. You know what I mean. It, it not wasn't, not uh, not only did it not only did he ask him to do it to him, he had to do it to everybody in his household. Yeah, that's right. And you know, the household would look at Abraham and say, what? What? <laughs> 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 the whole household looking at Abraham. You can like, handle it. You can handle it. Mm. Yeah, the whole household looking like, I, surely you're not talking about me, right? Mm -hmm. I think I think that's why they still had some foreigners in the household. <laughs> yeah, the foreigners was like, we did not comprehend. They, they weren't willing to go through it. Yeah, <laughs> but... It's the, it, when you think about it, think about it now. It says something about how the people in Abraham's house felt. Mm -hmm. That he was not only faithful, mm -hmm. his household mm -hmm. was faithful. Think about it. Yeah, There had to be some people going like, oh, heck no. Yeah. Abraham, give me a donkey or something. I, I'm mm -hmm. out. I, I'm gone. And he said, if you don't do it, if they don't do it, then they have no part. Of this covenant so they had to be convinced like abraham that it was important to have this covenant it was important to have this relationship it was important to have god on your side it was important see sometimes we're not willing to lose things mm. okay we're not willing to lose things that are painful mm. foreskin we're not going to lose things that are painful my child we're not willing to lose things that are painful my house. We're not going to lose things that are painful. My job. You know what I mean? When you think about things that you can lose that are painful, even the process of losing them, cutting them off is painful. Oh yeah. I'm trying to paint a picture about this faith that Abraham had mm -hmm. and his household had because they succumbed to that covenant and, and that covenant existed throughout generations. It wasn't just Abraham and stop. It wasn't just Abraham's household and stop. This continued. That when a child turned eight days old from birth, they would go through that same process. So I, I wanted to kind of establish that. And, 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 the, and the other thing that I wanted to, to make sure that I mentioned was that when he changed Sarai's name, wait a minute, am I not embarrassed enough? Mm. Being Sarah, now you're gonna make me Sarah. Lord, what, is, what are you doing? Lord, you 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 giving somebody a word 
and they're telling me that I'm going to do this. And you're telling me I'm going to have that. And people look at me like, well, shit, they, they ain't got a, a pot, do you know, and a, and a window, do you know what? You know, you know, people look at you like that when you stand mm -hmm. up there and receive a prophecy, mm -hmm. a great prophecy, a great word towards you. You know what I mean? And and, and you know you ain't got 10 cents to your name and, and, and you receiving a prophecy that, that that's greater than what you look like. And people look at you like, hmm, praise the Lord. Right. So they, they're looking at you like, really? Um, uh, hmm. That, that's going to be a miracle. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You know, so she and already... Sarah, Sarah, Sarah was already concerned about people laughing at her. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Even, even though Isaac's name, that's what it means, laughter. Right. I mean, exactly. And that's the point. Earlier you, Go ahead. Earlier you were talking about... Earlier you were talking about how in the biblical times names really meant something and his name Isaac means laughter mm. yeah but, but but guess what we all know Sarah laughed right mm -hmm. well, well, yeah. what did you just so read? Yeah. <laughs> Abraham laughed didn't he? yeah does anybody yes, he know did, the difference too. Does anybody know the difference in the laugh that Abraham had and the laugh that Sarah had? Uh, if I'm the, not mistaken. Uh, laugh that Abraham did was, it's here, it's finally here. And Sarah was laughing because I don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're exactly right. The, the, the laughter that Abraham had was was a, a laugh that, that wasn't cynical. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. It, 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 it was almost to the point where it was joyous. You know what I mean? Like, ah, okay. Right. All right. We about to do this like Amen. this. All right, Lord. It's about to be like this. You know what I mean? <laughs> but but it, but Sarah was like, <laughs> really? And then, and then when God yes. challenged her on it, she was like, no, oh, what me? What? I, I ain't laughing. You know, now, how are you going to tell God you didn't laugh and you, and you plainly, clearly laugh, right? <laughs> you know. But it, it was, it's something uh, because when it, it's, it's one thing for God to change Abraham's name yeah. from Abraham to Abraham. It's another thing for him to say, okay, now I'm going to include your wife yeah. into this. And now you'll know because it's one thing for me to be. Yeah. Uh, for for the Lord to tell me something, it's another thing for the Lord to tell me and Trinity something, and it coincides. Yeah. It's like, wait a minute, what's going on here? I ain't the yeah. only one that's hearing this. This has got to be God, you know? Yeah, yeah exactly. Amen. Well, he he had to he had to bring Sarah in. She was having the baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But now he, now Abraham is not alone in the quote unquote crazy. In the promise, you know, right. he's he's not the one that's. He's not the only one. Now she's got to carry the promise as she's also carrying the baby. Yeah. So she's like pregnant with twins because she's pregnant with the promise, but she's also going to be pregnant with the baby. Yeah. Yeah. And, and before she starts and showing, also, go ahead. And, and also uh, all of uh, the people that were following Abraham, they say, shoot, that man got all that money. I'm following him. I don't <laughs> care what I need to do. <laughs> yeah, and, and I tell you, mm -hmm. as I segue over to uh, Pastor Stanley and tag him and let him take off with uh, chapter 18, I, I'll say this, that it, it put it put a different perspective on me studying this this time because when you start talking about losing foreskin, you know what I mean, as a covenant with, with God, it think it makes you think about some of the things we've lost in our life, you know what I mean, in our faith, in our walk, you know what I mean? And we clearly don't measure up to losing that. And even Sarah, when she got her new name, she, she kind of lost face because now it's like, okay, Sarah. You know, you could probably hear him, Sarah, hey, Sarah, uh-huh. You know, they call her her name, but it's kind of shaded because she ain't she ain't got no child. You know, yeah, I, I kind of split those verbs. She ain't got no child. You know what I mean? 
but your name says you're gonna have like a nation. You you you're gonna be like a princess, you know. Right. And with that, I'm gonna tag team my brother. You know <laughs> what I mean? And bring him in. So go ahead, give me a high five, Pastor Stanley. Come on in the house. All right. All right, with the high five. <laughs> so I right. I'll, I'll pick up from a. Uh, Genesis 18, uh, we went from uh, verses 1 to verses 15. And uh, sticking with what Pastor Green was speaking about, the promise of the pregnancy happening. Um, does somebody want to read uh, chapter 18, verses 1 through 15? Uh, chapter 18, verses 1 through 15. Yes, ma'am. I'll read it um, unless that new person that just came on wants to read. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm, I'm reading from the NIV. Okay. The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance of the tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to mm. the ground. He said, if, if I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let the little water let a little water be brought, and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed, and then go on your way. Now that you had, now that you have come to your servant very well, they answered, "Do as you say." So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three shields of the finest flour and knead it and bake some bread. They didn't have no microwave back in them days. Have mercy, Lord. <laughs> then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to a servant who hurried to prepare it. Mm. Then he brought some curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> and set them before them while they ate. He stood near them under a tree. Mm. Where, where is your wife, Sarah? He asked him. There in the tent, he said, then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year. And Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening in the entrance of the tent, mm. which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already very old, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself, and she thought, after I am worn out and my Lord is old, I will now have this pleasure. Then, Lord, then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, will I really have a child? Now that I'm old, is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah has Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. <laughs> he said, Yes, you did laugh. Verse 16. <laughs> When the men got up to leave, they looked down towards Sodom, and Abraham walked along with them to see them on their way. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Question, and there's one question that just rose up in me as you was reading that. Uh, were uh, Abraham and Sarah equally yoked? Oh, yeah. That goes for anybody. Were, yeah, were they equally they, they yoked? They was on the same page. Were they really? Not well, she was, she was trying to be, but, you know, thinking about old age and having a baby, that's something yeah. to really think about. Okay. Right. So, right. She had been trying so long and now at a, a, um, a more, what you call it, season, mm -hmm. she, it's kind of hard to believe. And I, I'm not, like I know she Sarah, out, but. Sarah was wavering in her thinking as, as far as mm. her being pregnant because of her age, mm -hmm. but Abraham mm -hmm. had the faith. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, that, that's what I noticed. I noticed even though Abraham laughed, <laughs> when these three men are, are uh, entering into his presence, Abraham is not wasting time to serve them. Mm -mm. It's like rushing to get the best calf. He's rushing to get the bread. I mean, rushing get, to get the uh, the stuff to make the bread. He's not, okay. he's mm -hmm. not in his actions, he's not wavering. We know, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure everybody knows, when somebody tells you something that don't feel right, you kind of slow to move on it. But when these three men showed up, he didn't waste any time. He was like, oh, we got to get the best. We're going to go and get it. We get it now. He did everything in a haste to get what needed to be gotten for these three men who he knew that the Lord had sent them. Amen. So I asked it because she was looking at her circumstances. And, and the question is, right. how many of us look at our circumstances? How long it's been? Uh, mm -hmm. What's not working? what's not uh what right. the bank account doesn't look right the the credit score doesn't look like you might get the vehicle or the house but your actions kind Sarah of said, your Sarah actions said kind of show, when she was thinking go ahead think there's, there's a scripture that says uh what's in our heart comes out what's in our heart comes out. Like we can profess that we have faith and that we love God, but when the rubber meets the road or that the, the heat is applied, does that really mean what it means to you? Do you really believe? Do you really believe? And the, my question is that we, we, we have a, a lot of talk where we talk about equally yoked but I just, I, it just came up in me as you was reading it. Like she's looking at her circumstances, but Abraham is like, get the calf, get the stuff to make the bread. Come on, let's go. The, the promise is unfolding. It, it kind of reminds Our me. Sarah was thinking about with her age. Right, yeah. And, and, and the question is how, how many of us do that? How many of us look at our circumstances? I think we all look at our circumstances yeah. until we actually see something that mm -hmm. really changes us. Mm -hmm. Amen. It kind of reminds me of, um, I think it was Elijah, right? And Elijah sent his servant to check for the rain that was supposed to come. Mm. And he went so many yeah. times and there was nothing. And he went again and there was nothing. And then I think like on the seventh time he went, and he was like, I don't see any change. Nothing is changing. There is a cloud, but the cloud is about the size of a man's hand. <laughs> and from there, he was like, all right, get get everything together. It's coming. So this kind of reminds me of that story where just one little, one little piece of, one little piece of, uh, of faith forming right in front of you is like the thing that should thrust us into sometimes believing that, okay, this thing is about to happen. It's about to unfold. I'll give you an example and I'll be personal about this. Um, meeting my wife, my she was a friend, strictly a friend when I first met her. But there was something in my, 
in my spirit that was telling me that this is something more. I didn't know. I didn't, I wasn't looking. I didn't believe. But something in my spirit was saying, this is different. The thing that showed me who she really was, and I hadn't proposed, hadn't even thought about marriage or anything like that. My grandfather died. And if any of you know, me and my grandfather were like this. Uh, with the ministry, with just seeing him on a regular basis on Sunday after Sunday. So when he passed, even in my mourning and my pain of him going and leaving, you know, going to be with the Lord, that was God saying, okay, you needed to know. And trust me, I was praying because I didn't want to make that mistake. Um, he said, here's a little thing that if you need a little bit of confirmation, I'm going to give you something that will assure you. And like I say, even in my pain of losing my grandfather, she began to come into a position other than a girlfriend. She was there to wipe my tears and to, you know, uh, encourage me at the time. It was, it was just something that I needed. And I think I'm pretty sure God knew that I needed to see it. But it was just that little small thing that gave me something to stand on to say, okay, she is more than just a girlfriend. And as I can speak six, five or six years of knowing her, and then now we got Axel and, you know, being married for that long, it all makes sense now. But it was that one little thing that made me say, okay, this, this is it. And I had to tell my mom and my mom, you know, if y'all know my mom, my mom is very, she was very protective of me. But when I said it and saw it, something shifted. And, and I, I see Abraham shifting when those three men showed up, he didn't have to be convinced when he saw them show up and he was like, oh, okay, I know what this is. So I didn't see him moving in his non-belief, no matter how long it had been. And the question is, even as, if, if we wait as long as Abraham waited or we're waiting on a promise that God gave us each individually, whatever it may be, I believe that God knows that we begin to waver just a tad bit, but us being his children and knowing that he loves us as much as he does and knowing that he's concerned about the things that we feel, the nights where we're up crying and we, we can't get an answer. He sees that and he's willing to give us just a little jokes so that we'll know whether it be the three men showing up for Abraham or the, the cloud that looked like a, a man's hand, just to know that we serve a God and that we worship a God who knows that. You know, we might not even talk about those nights where we're crying and we're praying or we're crying out to God and nobody knows that. Everybody sees what we present, but nobody knows about those nights that we can't get an answer. We don't hear anything. But it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Go ahead. I thought you were saying this. I wanted no. to say something. No, ma'am. Go ahead. I just wanted to say, don't you think it, to me, it seemed like it was easier for Abraham to believe compared to Sarah. I, I mean, I think it was easier because uh, Abraham, he had approached Abraham long before he even approached Sarah mm -hmm. about doing anything. Mm -hmm. Abraham mm -hmm. and him had a relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So his relationship grew little by mm -hmm. little. And then when he started talking about Sarah, you know, then um, I'm sure he was amazed also saying Sarah, <laughs> just like Sarah was saying me. <laughs> but, but, Amen. But, but you know, the funny part was, Sarah was like, child, please. I'm tore from the flow up and show it. Abraham, Abraham right. tore up from the flow. Who? Abraham? You talking about right. Abraham, right? Man, Abraham tore up from the flow up. I'm tore up. He tore up. We uh -huh. got a tore up household. So, you know, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I, I do believe with, with her having that relationship, I mean, with Abraham having that relationship, that played a major difference, though. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what made the difference. I don't know who it was in the Bible who said 
Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Mm. It was Thomas. It was Thomas, Thomas. Dotton Thomas. Yeah. That was the one that was sticking his hand in the hole of mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Isn't isn't it a good thing that even with if if we can if we can go to where Thomas was when uh, he didn't believe and he stated that question, Jesus was willing to come and do exactly what Thomas needed him to do. So he he Amen. said he said what he said, and Jesus showed up and said touch the palms of my hand or see the palms of my hand, thrust your hands into my side. So that should be encouragement for us to know that all we have to do is go into his presence. And we have the, Amen. we have the, the opportunity and we have the, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, we just are able assurance. to assurance. We have the, the assurance to know that when we make a request like that, uh, he shows up or something shifts. It's not always, I mean, with him being control of everything, something will shift and show us as believers that we're not alone or that he heard Amen. our prayer, he heard our request. It's and like, he wants uh, to answer our request. Amen. Yeah, it's like Isaiah 43, where he's told us that he's, he's there, he'll always be there. Whether you're going through the fire or the flood, he's there. Amen. Amen. It's it's uh it 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 just shows me that it might not come today, it might not come tomorrow, mm. it may not even come New Year's Day, <laughs> but the promise that he makes to us. If he made it, he's going to keep it. He's going to fulfill it. Amen. I, I, you know, keeping our minds on him and keeping our focus on him. Like last night we were discussing in, um, uh, in Ahab, everlasting God. And the, what did that mean to us? And I think it kind of, it echoes what we we're discussing tonight. Because in order for you to be able to make a statement like that, you have to have seen him go and do things year after year, time after time, uh, uh, generation after generation, not just my generation, my mom's generation, my grandfather's generation. So it, it allows, it, it will equip me to be able to say that he's a healer or he's a provider. And I'm pretty sure there's people on the line that can go on up until midnight tonight having the conversation of how he showed up for them time after time after time. Just yeah. over and over. It goes it goes back to that song that says, You can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. And I wanted to mention that although uh, Thomas was a doubter and he did doubt. Uh, Jesus with the nail prints. Mm -hmm. The actual quote, uh, help down my unbelief, came from the, the father of the the lunatic that was rolling around foaming at the mouth. Right. And uh, he asked, he said, Lord, help down my unbelief. Just, just FYI. Mm -hmm. That's over in Mark chapter 9. Amen. 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 So to to be honest, and I'm, I'm from from the time I've joined Burning Bush, I I recognize you guys to be a very transparent church. Uh, even when it comes to Pastor Nea, uh, he is the head of the transparent committee <laughs> at Burning Bush, which which uh, takes away a whole lot of pressure. Amen. I don't know about anybody else, but it takes away a whole lot of pressure with being transparent. With really, saying, it really does. Yeah, with saying that I struggle to believe what what God has promised me. How many of us in the line can say that we struggle with the promises that God made us, has made us, that we're waiting on to unfold now? Amen. 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 
I don't know about struggling to believe, but I struggle on saying how long. Mm. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's it right there. What we're doing. Yeah, yeah. And, and and I go back to that box by the door, <laughs> you know, and and it's so vivid. And I know Vicky can attest to that. I mean, we 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 had to walk by that box coming in, coming and going mm. every day, and. Mm. Uh, I, I pastored that church for about eight years. Mm. And and that box was there for seven of those years, I'd say. Mm. You know, um, it would fill up and we would empty it. Mm. You know, but it never got any bigger than, than it did. I mean, like mm. I said, it went from a paper box to a plastic bin, but that's as far as it went. <laughs> you know, um, but when I, when I saw God manifest himself, it, it made a difference. That's a great, if you don't mind me asking, how long was that from the time that you did it at that church up until the time that you got to burn a bush and it was a full fledged running machine that runs at the, uh, at the portables? Uh, probably, like I said, we, we probably had that box at the door mm -hmm. the, the last seven years mm -hmm. of the ministry there. And, um, we came to Virginia in 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, we came to Burning Bush that 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 spring, spring summer, um, and I didn't, uh, I wasn't installed until uh, this year, mm -hmm. 2022. 2022. So you, you're looking at about 10 years, yeah. 10 or 11 years, um, and and I, knowing that God is faithful. Mm -hmm. uh, knowing that, that he will do what he said he'll do, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I, after I left that box by the door, mm -hmm. I literally had left the thought in my mind of having a food ministry at a church. Matter of fact, I didn't come to Virginia looking for a church. Mm -hmm. uh, I came to uh, looking to relieve uh, our, our daughter-in-law and raising our grandkids. Mm -hmm. uh, but I knew God would direct me where he wanted me to go worship. And I came to Burning Bush looking for a place to worship, looking for a place to give him glory. And I told uh, Bishop McNair, I said, we're looking for a place of worship. We love worshiping here. Or we're going to join the ministry. But as soon as God shows us where we should be, that's where we're going to go. And he was like, I already know where you're going to be. He, you know, he, he, <laughs> you have to know him to, to, know, how, to know that comment. Absolutely. Amen. And, uh, and, uh, mm -hmm. I, I never anticipated until it was confirmed, you know, and then even after he told us, it was still like, you know, things can change at any time. Right. You know, I, I'm looking at all the ministers and all the elders and, mm -hmm. and a whole church and all these mm -hmm. things in place. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering in my spirit, Lord, uh, is, is this where you would have me to be? Mm -hmm. And and this is where God had had uh, directed us to be. So we thank God for it. But along the way, we're talking about years of having a box and now having a building, mm. you know, man, but, Amen. But, but God is faithful. Amen. God is, God is faithful. Yes, he is. Amen. Anyone else have a, uh, have a, uh, uh, a testimony of God giving a promise going through the waiting process and then the promise coming to pass. Don't everybody speak at I once. Wanna, uh, um, I just want to say that um, with my grandson that I know God could take care of him and I kept praying to him and he was telling me to relax myself, mm. it's going to be taken care of. Mm. And although it took a, some time, it seemed like it took a while, mm -hmm. which, which it really didn't. I guess it was my patience. Mm. And I saw it come, come t through, too, although he's still going through things now. Mm -hmm. But praying to him, and I could feel myself having peace in the situation as it went on mm. him telling me that it's going to be all right i got y'all and that's what happened 
Amen. 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 Anyone else had a situation, uh, has a testimony to speak on that, waiting or promise to unfold and then it unfolds? Yeah, Pastor Stanley, this is uh, Cecilia. I just joined in. Yes, ma'am. Um, you know, I asked God to, you know, I went through this uh, uh, stage in my life where I never had enough, always struggling, living paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. uh, and my, my promise from God was that I won't have to do that anymore. And I'm 67 years old and God has answered my prayer. And I, I thank God, I really do thank God that uh, I wouldn't say the struggle is over, but I'm in a new chapter. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know, you, Amen. I, it was times that I had to ask God, who should I go get the money for from? Right. Who, who mm -hmm. should I ask? Because I, I at least want it to be directed in that way. Yes, ma'am. But now I, I don't have to. And I, I just thank God. With his Amen. goodness and mercy, and uh, Amen. That peace, you know. Yes. Amen. People say, you know, money can't buy peace, but it shows it, <laughs> it helps. Amen. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You lied if you say the money, you know, mm -hmm. being able to support yourself. Yes, it's not some pressure coming hey. off of. Amen. Amen. And we'd be surprised how that uh, that weighs on our thoughts and it bleeds out into everything else the uh not having enough because i don't know about y'all when i don't have enough money i'm 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 good when i got a wallet full but if i'm tight <laughs> if i can't go to uh we lo i love going to this steak place in chesapeake but if i can't go when i want to go I, i'm gonna be kind of tight I'm gonna be mad sometime. I'm gonna be up top, like Lord, <laughs> Lord, when? <laughs> and I have a spiritual brother who's always talking about um, God supplying and giving you know what we need. And I'm like, man, I would love a good T-bone right now. And I can't do, you know what is different when you have a a surplus of money, you can just go and get that when you want to, you know. But it's, it's 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 wonderful when God gets you to a place where you stop. You can He can be supplying. That supply also uh, calms your calms the anxiety in your mind about not having enough or not having it when you want it. Yeah. You know, I, I got to share this story, uh, and I know Vicky probably already know what I'm going to say, but. For years, I'm at this ministry and I'm trying to grow. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm 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 walking a neighborhood. I'm doing all these things, and you know what I mean. I'm like a, a Mexican jumping bean all over the place, <laughs> trying to make the ministry grow. And my wife, loving as she is, looked <laughs> at me and said, "Baby," she said, "This ministry is not going to grow any further." And you know, mm -hmm. my eyes kind of rolled back in my head, right? Mm -hmm. She said, this is not where God planted you. Mm. And I'm looking at her like, wow. like Joe must have been looking at his wife. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like, are you are you kidding me? You know what I mean? I know God gave you this church. I know God put me in this ministry. And you're looking at me telling me that this ain't where God planted me. To, that, and, and she was like, well, you, you got to know. If you know, you know what I'm saying. She's looking at, <laughs> well, that's it. This ain't what God got for you. Mm -hmm. This ain't, you know, I know you're trying. I know you're doing all you can, but it's not going to grow any further. Mm -hmm. But this is not where God planted you. And when you out in the field trying to plant, you know what I mean? You, you, you like, that ain't what I want to hear. <laughs> you know what I mean? You want to hear, go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. She's like, this is, but, but guess what? It wasn't where God planted me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It wasn't the, the place where he was he had for us to be. Mm. <laughs> Somebody speaking. Hey, 
it, here's a question. Um, I noticed uh, in in the in the story, uh, it's talking about Abraham. There comes a point where Sarah laughs, and I want to ask a question about connection the people that you have around you, the people that are in your circle, even though God has sincerely made a promise to you. Mm -hmm. Can you, are you able to share that promise with people or, or, or are you keeping that promise inside of you, in your heart? Because you know your friends, like I know my friends, you can't, there are certain friends that I can have conversations with about spiritual things, but then there are certain friends that I won't even go yeah. into that room and have that conversation. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Do do you do you uh, even with family? Is is there a time where God has made you that <clears throat> promise, whatever it may be, where you might share it, and then that person might not believe it? Do you think that would affect your faith or would it, would you just be like, no, I know what the Lord told me? That happened to me earlier in, in my growing years. I was in a church before I came to um, Burning Bush. And when I was at that church, we had a lot of changeover of pastors coming in and leaving. And um, I was under John Dunn mm. at that other, at that church when I first got there. And the Lord had sent me there and told me that I was a vessel for Jesus. Mm. Cause I was tithing. I was doing everything I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, God was giving me miracles, and I I enjoyed those. And then um, after John Guns left, then um, another man came, another young minister came, and he was okay. And uh, we was talking one, one day, and I was telling him that uh, God told me that I was a vessel for Jesus. And he laughed. And I'm thinking, well, what are you laughing for? Because <laughs> uh, when I went to that church, when John Gons were there, I was coming back because I was living in Norfolk. I was coming over the bridge. And God told me that I was a vessel for Jesus because every church he sent me to, you know, I went. I didn't complain. I just went because mm -hmm. he knew I was hungering and thirsting for more of him. And I couldn't get it at where I was. And he sent me where I could get it. And then when that young minister said that, and, uh, you know, he was up in the pulpit, but it was mm -hmm. like on a Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the seasoned saints are there and all. And and I, I guess he thought he was going to kill my spirit, but it did not. Because mm -hmm. uh, I know what God had told me. And, you know, I told my family, and they accepted. I'm talking about my siblings. They accepted it. But, of course, my sons didn't. They looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> but I just knew that God was going to use me for many things, and he has. He's allowed me to do many things, and I'm truly grateful that he has done that for me. And I know he's not done with me yet. Amen. 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 You know, you know, I, I'd have to say, uh, Pastor Stanley, that the statement that my wife made to me stuck in my mind because mm -hmm. when our, our daughter-in-law asked us to relocate to Virginia, mm -hmm. if I had no inclination that God has something else for me, mm -hmm. I probably would have never prayed about it. I probably just thought she was crazy too. Right. <laughs> but, but, but we we prayed about it and we asked God about releasing us from where we were. Mm -hmm. to come to Virginia for that purpose. And he released us to come. And, and I, have to, I have to know in my, in my heart, in my spirit, that, that that was a seed that she planted, that God sent so that I wouldn't be trying to hold on to, 
for something that he was trying to loosen from and direct us to a whole nother place that we did we had no idea of of, of coming to. You know, there was never anything in our imagination that says we're gonna move to Virginia. Never, mm-hmm. never ever. But but God had to plant that seed. Amen. And it had to come from my wife. And 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 with that, um, not knowing at all, <laughs> a, a blind faith that echoes Abraham because at the beginning of this whole thing, Abraham is told to gather his wife, gather his family, go to where I will send you. He didn't even know where he was going just completely under the direction of God. Can, it's, it's two questions. Can we wait? And if God says go somewhere or just go, can we do both? Because I, I think that, that it's, it's one thing to, to exhibit certain things that a Christian is supposed to exhibit or that we've known Christians to exhibit when it comes to traditional uh, Christianity. It's another thing to wait on a promise or go somewhere that only you and God know where you're going, or only you and God know the promise that he's made you. And you got it tucked into your heart and you, you, you want to share it with other people. You want to share it with your family, but you know that the outcome might be the same outcome that Abraham received of them probably thinking he was crazy. The same thing that they thought when it came to Noah, Noah building this, this boat, God has made this promise that it's going to rain. It ain't rain. They don't even know what rain is, but it's coming. And God has made that promise to, to Noah. And it's the same thing with us. He's made that promise to us and they might not even be up sign anywhere that this thing is going to come together and work question is can you hold on and hang on to that promise that he's given you like miss joe said with her hearing that she's going to be healed i've known miss joe for a long time and i know certain things that she's been through in that process of waiting and it hasn't happened yet but does that mean that god has not told given her that promise because i'm obviously convinced that god gives a promise and from that promise to the day that it is fulfilled he doesn't change the promise doesn't change then, let me jump in there yes sir please um in, in my in my experience uh, we have to learn how to wait on god's timing because we get we get excited about the promise mm-hmm. we want to we want to go in the promise, and in my case, I told people for a long time that I was going to Florida. <laughs> I didn't know how, didn't know when, but I knew I was supposed to go to Florida. Yes, sir. And then I had made up in my mind, it's time for me to go. And when I was preparing to go, and I, I've said this story many times to Bernie Bush, you know, I had got my leave together. I was going to go, and God said, I didn't tell you to go yet. So that was kind of put the brakes on it. It's just like Abraham and Sarah. You're going to have a child. He didn't tell them to have to wait so many years before the child, but he, mm-hmm. the promise still came. When I came to uh, Greater Mount Zion, then now Burning Bush, I told first thing I told Pastor, I said, I don't know how long I'm going to be here because I got to go to Florida. <laughs> and I was honest about that. And, uh, I, and I told him I didn't know when, but I know God wanted me to go. Amen. Little did I know that he, when I got there, he orchestrated all that through the same John guns that uh, <laughs> Jeanette's talking about. We end up in Florida. We got training for some of the stuff we're doing now. Mm. And, and, and and the connection is still with Green because they know the same people. We, wow. didn't, we didn't meet Green in Florida, but we were down in the same area, trained <laughs> by the same person. And God fulfilled that promise, but I had to wait on his time and his way. Amen. You know, when when you were talking, Stanley, 
my mind went back to Joseph also in the book of Genesis Mm -hmm. and how he used to share everything that God said to him Mm -hmm. with his brothers. Yes, ma'am. And how they ended up putting him in the pit Mm -hmm. and ended up treating him Mm -hmm. because he was sharing everything that God had told him. Yes, ma'am. For him. Yes, ma'am. So therefore, therefore, for me, I have to have to learn how to trust and depend and wait on God. Mm-hmm. I don't try to tell everybody the things that God says to me. Yes, and ma'am. I've been through some things that have been mighty ugly yes, and ma'am. didn't know how it was going to turn out. But God has brought me through. Amen. And I know that if he brought me through one time or two times or three times, he's going to bring me through again. Amen. And for those who don't know, John Guns was born in Titustown. Town. <laughs> 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 thought you just throw that in there, right? <laughs> yeah, I thought, I thought I'd let y'all know he came from T-Town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <awesome. laughs> That's it. <laughs> Him and his brother Frank and Jeffrey. Oh man, Sister Joyce and Diane, <laughs> all of them. I know them all. <laughs> <laughs> to the whole family. Stanley, I had an experience, an Abraham experience, when God told me to pack. Yes, ma'am. He didn't tell me where to go. <laughs> hmm. He said, it was time to go and pack. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I didn't question him, though. I just did what he said. I saw mm-hmm. pack. And I didn't know where I was going, but I saw packing. And at the time, Trevon had become a real estate agent. Mm. And I said, okay, God, I, I know what you're doing now. Mm. Trevon going to direct me where I was supposed to go. <laughs> I don't care what that girl showed me. It didn't go through. Because <laughs> I'm trying to figure God out, right? <laughs> but the promise came through Joanne. Mm. She called me one day and said, Cecilia, it's an apartment open out here. That door opened so fast. I had just turned 55. Wow. So I thank God. You know, you never know. When Amen. Came, just do it. Mm-hmm. Because he got the door open already. Amen. I could have said, well, shoot, Amen. Thank God. I ain't packing. I ain't going nowhere. Mm-hmm. But I packed up in faith because I knew it was time for me to move. Man. It's funny you said it because I, I, I came home from the cleaners that day and I was telling Vicky about this lady that I met at the cleaners. <laughs> the thought the burning bush was the, the place to be in. He said, the what? I said, the burning bush. She said, the burning bush. I, she said, where is it? I said, oh, I, I got GPS. I got coordinates. I got latitude and longitude. Uh-huh. And I had all that information. Mm-hmm. And, and it still was two weeks before we, we, we came to visit. Mm. I tell you, when we came to visit, the thing that struck us was that everybody in the church to a person came and hugged our neck and shook our hand. Absolutely. And, I, and that's that's a m- moment I'll never forget. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we just kind of looked at each other like, wow. Mm-hmm. There, there was that much love uh, generating coming from that congregation. Mm-hmm. Th- thank God for the experience. Oh, yeah. You know, I had a I had a situation like that as well. When I first came to Burnham Bush, I knew I was supposed to come and check it out, but I had no idea that I was gonna join. But my grandfather, who's pastor, who had pastored maybe 40 years, he told me, he said, and it stuck with me all the way up until the time that I joined Burnham Bush. He said, when you get to where you're supposed to be church-wise, you'll know it. He said, there won't be no doubt. And you may be the only one in your family that attends. He said, but when you get to where you're supposed to be church-wise, you will know it. And coming into Burning Bush, the very first time that I came to that church, this was when pastor would come out of the pulpit and give the mic to the visitors. It was just, it was a feeling of love that was in that place. And me honestly i don't i haven't felt like it's changed it hasn't changed and it's been some years but it was just that feeling of love and i was in a hurting place when i did come and i can tell you that burning bush is a 
recovery room, hospital, that you might come in one way, but you definitely won't leave the same way. There's an outpouring of love that's not incorporated in every church. People might want to say that it is, but it's not because you can automatically feel when love is in a place and when it's not in a place. Or eventually you'll see it and you'll, you know, not want to be in, in the midst of that place. But there was a there was definitely a feeling, a knowing that this is the place. And I, I can't even tell you how, how many years that's been, but that was my experience as well and I had no idea all I know is I moved across the street to the apartments and I was like okay I knew God was up to something because I'm like okay burning bush and it sent me to my scripture my scriptures to find out what exactly what was so important about the burning bush and from that point on it was just you know rolling with Pastor McNair you know he gonna toss you in some stuff and you know long story short I don't even know how long I've been there now <laughs> but it, it was a, it was a definitely a blind walk of faith because imagine belonging to a church that's practically your family and then going to a place where you think that you don't know nobody because I didn't think that nobody was connected to me at that church to burn at Burning Bush but there were some people who knew not only my family but Miss Joanne we had worked together but it had been like four or five years since I had even seen her. But just so happens, I came to that church one Sunday and there she was on the front row. Another confirmation. We just have to keep in mind that God, even when we don't see it or we don't feel it or we don't recognize it, that he is orchestrating. He's guiding our steps. The word says the steps of a good man or woman are ordered by the, by the Lord. So even if and you find Stanley, this, I believe that. Yes, ma'am. I believe that because God God sent me to Burning Bush. Yes, ma'am. Well, well, really, it was Greater Mount Zion, you know, before that. But I just thank God. Yes, I thank God. He sent yes, me to a church that's growing and growing, and the mm -hmm. spirit is high, and evangelism is still alive in me. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. 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 And I tell you, I, I think I'll uh, never forget. Uh -oh. I'll never forget when um, Pastor McNair walked to the back of the church and was talking with Stanley. And I was sitting there and I said, I know that voice. <laughs> and it was after, after the church service, I went and realized that it was Stanley Stanley that I had worked with. And then I went and told Pastor, we've got a youth pastor sitting out there. <laughs> and I, I knew nothing the about that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so I, knew, I knew Stanley's history from his home church, and I shared it with Pastor. And after the Stanley joined the church, the rest is, is history. Yes, ma'am. What a mighty God we serve, right? Amen. 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 It took it took Sister D to get us there. Mm. You know, you just never know how God is going to get you to where where, where He wants you to go, where He wants yeah. you to be. Amen. It, it, it's funny because it wasn't anything good that brought me to that church. To be honest, if I could be one thousand percent transparent, I thought. Me personally, I thought that I had gotten out of the will of God. And I thought, well, this is it. I'm out of the will. You can't do nothing with me. I, I'm out of the will. I'm, I, I'm not in, the, in your hand no more. But that was when he showed me who he really is. Now you can't tell me that there is a point where you can go that he can't reach you. What, there's not a hole that you can end up in that he can't reach down and pull you up out that hole. You can't tell me that. So if somebody come to me tomorrow and say I've I've gotten up, no, you didn't. You don't even you don't even know the God we serve, man. <laughs> but if need be, he will show you the type of God he is by by sitting. I can I can speak personally out of that. I won't go into the full the full thing, but I will tell you that I personally thought that I had gotten out of his will 
and he couldn't reach me. But shows what I know with my little human brain, right? Praise God. Praise God. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. You can't never get too far that God can't reach you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Does anyone else want to add anything? I see it is 8.33. I got my brother Johnny here. <laughs> That's what took me so long, entertaining him. Hey, brother Johnny, how you doing? Hey, hey, how you doing? <laughs> Show your face, Johnny. Hey, sir, how you doing? Come to the camera. There you there go. There you go. <laughs> Man of God, how you doing, sir? I'm doing fine, are you? Good, good. Glad to see you. And I see you all, too, and seeing the uh, power of the Holy Spirit moving in your all's program tonight. God is good. Amen. Is good. Amen. All the time. Look, Stanley, I had to get him to buy me a steak like you were talking about. <laughs> Amen. Mess around. I got everybody hungry for a steak on the line. <laughs> Brother Johnny, you want to, uh, I, I should say Reverend, you want to grace say anything to us or share anything with, with, with us on the line? You, you're welcome, sir. I appreciate the opportunity to say something. You know, you're supposed to always be ready and prepared to <laughs> say something about the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So the only thing I can say in sharing and just sitting here and in a home of love and listening to the testimony my sister shared with you all on just being obedient and not trying to figure out what God is saying to you. Sometimes we have to walk by faith and not by sight. And in many cases, as where we are today, our faith needs increasing. And in faith is increasing by hearing the word of God. And I just believe in that, that as we are being challenged to today's different situations, whether it be famines, whether it be climate control, whether it be whatever the situation is, it's nothing too hard for God to work out. So I just believe in and continue to have faith and having my faith increase to speak to my brothers and sisters and just say, hold on, because we have the victory. Don't wait and think that we're going to get the victory, but we already have the victory. And so when you Amen. walk in victory, you can usher in the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't walk around being a defeated Christian and saying that you love Jesus. Jesus has the victory. He's, he declared that. He pronounced it. When he went to the grave, to hell, and took the keys from Satan, and he said, oh, death, where is your sting? And oh, great, where is your victory? Mm. So, and just to not knowing what I was to say, but this is what God is just sharing with me to speak to those of you all at Burning Bush, to just hold on mm. and know that you serve a victorious God, not a defeated God, and you also share in that victory. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, sir, for that word. <laughs> You're welcome. God bless and thank you for the opportunity to share. It, it was already ordained. We're just yeah. following through. I'm just trying to be obedient. God, God already had this set up before, Amen. We, before we even knew it. It was already a set up. Amen. Yeah, you got to be ready. Yeah. You gotta be ready. But you know, not the day or the hour when God is going to call us to do his bidding for us. Yes. Amen. 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 But God Amen. bless you all. God bless you, sir. God bless Thank you, sir. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, hey y'all give God a hand clap of uh, Pastor Stanley tonight. Amen. Amen. My, my, that's my tag team. Amen. Partner. Pastor Stanley, we tag team tonight. <laughs> Amen. Uh, uh, God is doing some great things. The first of many tag teams 
You know what I mean? I would love to partner and, and release and let other people uh, lead us in the word. Uh, That's why I don't know why I was late. You know, not only tag team and just take over uh, uh, Bible study themselves, you know, for the night. So it was just thank God for the, those opportunities and, and thank God for you, Pastor Stanley, for, for being willing to jump in and, and become part of it, even though you just uh, uh, talked about it this morning. Yes, sir. And it's truly a blessing. So uh, let, let's give God another hand clap for that. Amen. 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 And you, you've really enriched us tonight, Pastor Stanley, and and, uh, and and having my other brother in arms to come on and share with us as well. Yes, sir. It's truly a blessing. Uh, Reverend Johnny, you know, God bless you, sir, for being on. And thank you, Cecilia, yes, for, for bringing him on with us. You know, that's a blessing. Um, truly a blessing. Amen. If, if, if all hearts and minds are clear, does anybody have anything else they want to share? I know we're over, but, but you know, I don't want to cut, quench, quench the spirit of God has said, is speaking to Hello. someone. Yes. Oh, this is Joan. I had something to say. Sure. Hi. Oh, um, Hi. I was thinking about your son the other Saturday when we had the program <laughs> yes, and he came Fun and out and <laughs> jumped in your lap, your lap mm -hmm. and it reminded me of Esther. Mm. She said, I'm going to see the king. He's <laughs> 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 not supposed to be going up there to see the king. So she was going and she and she went on and, and did it, you know. Mm -hmm. that. That's what it, it reminded me of. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> and look, oh he, he, he will come and find me wherever I am. I mean, if I'm out of his sight for six minutes, he's going to come looking. So what he did Saturday <laughs> was what he's done on a smaller level. It's just that more people were watching on Saturday. That's all it was. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I like what it reminded me of, you know. Yes, ma'am. Push and pull. He's gonna go on and see his daddy. <laughs> I'm telling you. I am telling you. As it was gonna go and see the king. I tell That's you. Right. I like that. The king. I like that. I gotta yeah. use that in the house more often. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I'm gonna use that in the house more often to see how far it gets me. <laughs> <laughs> Taking us out on top, Joan. You're taking us out on top. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> You're taking us out on top. Oh, thank God for you. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Mm, mm, mm. Ain't nothing left now but the but the icing on the cake. Um, That's it. 
Jeanette, take us home. Let the words of my mouth. Let the, Let words, the words, words of my mouth. Words of my mouth. And the meditation of my heart. And the meditation, and the meditation, of, my meditation of my heart. Be acceptable in thy sight. Be acceptable, Be acceptable, in, acceptable in thy sight. In thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength. O oh Lord, oh Lord, my, Lord my, strength. my strength. And my redeemer. And my redeemer. Amen. 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 God bless everyone. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless. Enjoy, John.